if you want to get yourself some FIFA 17 coins, check out FIFALotto.com. They already have a ton in stock and do not forget to use code KURT for 5% off. What's up guys, Curtis here and welcome to episode 2 of the FIFA 17 career mode. Before I start doing stuff, I want to say a few important things to you guys. Firstly, thank you so much for the support on the first episode. We smashed a thousand likes, which is absolutely brilliant and it keeps going up every single time I check. So, I'm going to set you guys a really ambitious like target of 1,250 likes. If you guys can smash, no, we'll go for 1,234. So if you can smash 1, 2, 3, 4 likes, that would be absolutely amazing. A couple other things I need to say too. I will eventually be moving this series over to my second channel. So if you want to subscribe to my second channel to keep up to date with it all, click the link down below. It is youtube.com forward slash Curtis Seconds. And make sure you sub to it if you want to follow it on. Also, I will be doing polls throughout the series on my Twitter. So we'll be a link to a poll for later on in the episode uh, for something else about who you want to buy. So, firstly, in the last episode, a lot of guy, a lot of you guys said to delete my emails on the game as I go through, and I'll try and make it a little bit easier for you because I know there's a few of the guys in the chat, uh, in the comments, with a little bit of OCD when it comes to all of the uh, emails. So I'll try my best to keep on top of them. I was trying to rush through, so that probably explains just why that happened. So I put in the uh, asked you guys to put in the comments just a bunch of different suggestions for transfers, for centre-backs, all that sort of stuff, and you guys have absolutely smashed it out of the park. Now, we have one more transfer window episode after this one, so there's still a chance for a lot to change, but we're going to talk about some of our plans for transfers based off what you guys have suggested. So if we sort our team by position, you'll see I personally am completely happy with Ospina Check. A lot of people saying to get rid of Check, but he's 88 rated, and I think when it comes to it, that's when we'll replace our goalie when he goes on the decline. Because at 88 rated, I don't have any intentions to change him. Obviously, we need to bring in a centre back, and now this is where you guys come in. I've sorted through your suggestions, I've put some of my own suggestions in, and I've I've narrowed it down to about four players that made it close to it. Uh, were I think it's Stefan De Vrij, De Vrij, however you say his name, from Lazio, and uh, Manolas, Costa, Costas Manolas maybe? I can't remember his first name. Uh, both were suggested, but they've just met fallen short. There's a big thing about Roma would not sell uh, Manolas to Arsenal, and that was why Wenger wouldn't let Wilshere go on loan there. So he's off the books. I'm going to try and keep it somewhat realistic. But we have four players that I want you guys to decide between, which we're going to do a poll on, which is, again, like I said, that's what the link down below to my Twitter will be. There's a link to that poll. So while you're there, you may as well follow. But the four choices are Maurizio Lemos from Las Palmas, who had a fantastic season uh, last year. We have Riedewald, who's the, the um, Netherlands-Holland player. I think he plays for Ajax. Uh, we have Lindelof and we have Daniele Rugani. So you guys can pick on the poll down below. All of them are very young, have huge potential, uh, really good players. So go to the poll down below to decide the centre back. So we won't be buying a centre back this, this episode. That's staying down to you. Now, as you can see, I have actually transfer listed Kieran Gibbs. And a lot of people said to try and shift him out. Now, Monreal will start to decline soon. And if we're getting rid of Gibbs, which I do think will happen next year, in all honesty, then we need to find a replacement left back. That's kind of my hunt today to find a new left back. Uh, Chambers is obviously out on loan. So we have Jenkinson and Bellerin. And I'm going to actually try and transfer this Jenkinson because he doesn't have a future at the club. So maybe we need to find a backup for Bellerin. That might be next episode. So that might be something you need to put down below. Going forward, I was pretty happy with our options. Obviously, I, I want to shift uh, Sonogo out. I need to properly go through this list and sort, out, sort it out a little bit more. But uh, I, I was thinking about bringing in a youngster, someone like Emre Moore from Dortmund. Now, I don't think I can get him because he's just gone there. But I think we'll have a look at that. So I'm going to go through this list and I'll tell you each time I transfer to someone. But just hold up. So I'm going to put Matt Mason on the transfer list because... I, I don't think he'll grow to the level we want him to be. I'm also just going to stick Bielik up just to get him out of the squad. I want to loan Ready Adelaide out because the only time he'll be getting game time will be in the uh, Capital One Cup. And that's going to be the same with El Nene. I want him to get a season out on loan before I think about maybe bringing him into the squad. That's the same as well with uh, Gedeon Zelalem. And I was thinking about doing it with uh, Iwobi, but I want to try and get Iwobi involved because I do think he is a good player. He can play in a lot of positions and hopefully he can grow. And also the same with Maitland-Niles, just like with uh, Renny Adelaide, he's out uh, for on loan for the season. And then Chris Willock, uh, Willock even, and Tuberak Pom are both going to be sent out on season long loans. They're too low rated for me personally. I can't see them getting involved in the squad. The lowest rated player that I do see uh, inclusions with are Holding and Iwobi. So I think that's it sorted in terms of outgoings. Now I need to look at a left back and just see what depth we're going to need to do. 
So I've said this a few times, I want to try and keep it like somewhat realistic. So uh, the first two left backs I have in my mind, I've scouted them both and I've inquired for both of them, so we'll see what happens, is Grimaldo and Rodriguez. I've seen Grimaldo on Ultimate Team, he looks like a very good player, he's got decent... Um, like all round up attributes, he's pretty young. He's yeah, he's only 20. I think he's like late 70s rate, and I think he's like 78. We'll find out in the scout report. Uh, he seems like a really good player going forward. And like I said, he's very, very young and he's Spanish. I feel like he's someone that's very possible. And then Ricardo Rodriguez is the slightly older one, but he's only 23. I have in my mind he's older, but he's been around so long. He's a massively well-rounded left back. He's got amazing free kicks, obviously, as you can see. Great crossing, great, like, actual uh, attacking stats. But his pace lets him down a little bit. So we've inquired and scouted both of them. And I think maybe after the match, we'll come back and have a little look at that. Maybe it depends how soon it comes. So in case you missed when I mentioned in the last episode today, we're going to play the Leicester game and we're going to get up to around maybe, maybe the day before the Watford game and we're going to get our transfer business done. And then after next episode, what's going to happen is we'll play the Watford game and we'll play deadline day. I, I'm going to say play it because essentially that is what we're doing. And then the games kick in throughout the rest of the season. So let's get to the, uh, to the second game of the season and see what transfers happen. Okay, Benfica have come back and said 15 million quid for Grimaldo. That's not bad at all. I might just go in and just offer them 10 mil, see what they say. Because that is something, I'll, I'll pay 10 mil straight up and just take them off their hands just like that if it's only 10 mil. So, we'll see. They want 40 million quid for Rodriguez. He is the, like, upper echelon sort of player, but I can't see Arsenal spending 40 million on the left back. That's something that, in my opinion, would never, ever happen. Regardless of how good he is, like, we would never spend 40 mil on the left back. So, we're just not even going to think about that one. I want to say to you guys, I understand this episode is a lot of talking and a lot of just chatting about, but I, I'm really conscious that I want it to be a case of like, we work together on this series. I want to get you guys involved as much as possible, hence the polls, the comments down below. I don't want it to just be me, I want it to be our career mode. That's what I enjoy when I watch career modes, so that's what I want my one to be. Like, I always imagine I want it to be what I want to enjoy, if you get what I mean. And obviously you would have seen there, I put in the 12.5 million offer for Grimaldo. Now, the only thing is, I know I'm going to keep calling him Grimaldi, after Giles Grimaldi, the ex-Arsenal player. And I'm so conscious that I know I'm going to be saying it all the time. But we've put in the offer for him, 12.5 mil. Let's see how it goes. And of course, that means our first game of the season. We're up against Leicester. I did notice that it was actually world class we played the Liverpool game on. Now, I'm going to see if that was a stroke of luck or if it's too easy for me. So we're going to play this Leicester game. If I batter him 4-0 again like I did Liverpool, then we're going to bump it up to Legendary. But if it's a little bit trickier and maybe that Liverpool game is a one-off, then we'll keep it on world class. But let's make some changes to the team before we go in. Okay, a few changes are being made for this game. Uh, I'll start from uh, the back. The only change to the back four is that Kieran Gibbs is going to start over Monreal, given that it may be his last ever game for the club. I thought I'd give him a little start. Obviously, he's, he's relatively pacey. Uh, going forward, the, the midfield four again have stayed the same. Xhaka and Ramsey were really solid. And I want to give uh, Williams another game, see how he plays. Ozil's playing still behind the striker. And I'm going to give Lucas Perez a game ahead of Giroud. I've actually dropped Giroud uh, into the reserves just for the one match because... I wanted Iwobi on the bench because if we go to a free up, I want to try and bring him on uh, for Sanchez and just give him a bit of game time and see what he's like. Very likely that after 60 minutes, Lacazette comes on for Perez. Probably should start it that way, but I get a little bit sentimental and I kind of I want to play with the players that like interest me. And Perez is a player that I've not really used much and I want to give him a go. If we're struggling, without a doubt, Lacazette will come on, but we'll see how it goes. Right, first game of the season is away to Leicester. I do kind of like that it is the actual fixtures. Now, I actually went to this game, went away to Leicester, and it was a very boring 0-0 game, I won't lie. They've got a very strong squad. They didn't have Slomani in real life at that point. Very good team. This should be tricky. We'll see how we get on. Okay, Bellerin's actually gone on a massive overlap here, and I'm going to try and find him. I don't think it's the right time to make a cross, though, but if I can cut inside here... Do a bit of a weaving run, which we know Bellerin likes to do. He's got a bit of space, and it's 1-0. Fantastic play from Hector Bellerin. The defence couldn't do anything about him. He's going to go for a cheeky little dab. We're going to ring the, the goal bell. Ding, ding, ding. And that is 1-0 after just 17 minutes. I don't know why I'm finding World Class so easy this year. That is a fantastic bit of play. All I've had to do is just maintain possession, and we've, we've dominated the game. I think it's now time for a change, in all honesty. A few players... Not really had the best of games. So Xhaka's on a yellow card. So I'm going to take uh, him off for Coquelin. And I'm going to bring on someone for Mesut Ozil. No, no, no. I'm going to bring on Lacazette 
for Perez. I'm going to keep Urza on for about another 10 minutes, but he's looking tired and he's, he's been a little bit ineffectual in the middle of the park. So maybe it might see the time of either Cazorla or Chamberlain. It depends if we need uh, much of the same or a bit of pace going forward. Right, Nyaki Williams has it on this right hand side and hopefully if Bellerin can play a uh, overlap, we still haven't had the ball go out yet. So I'm going to try my best to put it out. But Hector Bellerin here has destroyed Christian Fuchs. The ball's whipped in and that is a goal. Has that gone in off Williams? I thought it went off uh, Lucas Perez. But that is 2-0. A great goal for Nyaki Williams. Thankfully, he's staying on the pitch. I wasn't subbing him off. But finally, after 10 in-game minutes, Bellerin a fantastic run. And that did come off the head of Williams. I thought it was Perez. It wasn't even Perez that went up for it. It was Ozil. But just to be completely sure, they both go for the header. But Williams just nabs it out from in front of him. And finally, our players will be coming off the pitch now. Our changes are going to happen. And if we can stop anything. So I'd quite like to keep a second clean sheet on the bounce. Musa has gone for a great effort. But Petacek saves. It's a corner last minute. I think we should be all right. And I, I say that and Slimani scores. I will eat my words. 2-1. I don't think they have much chance to get into this now. I just need to kind of hold possession, waste a bit of time. And there we go. That is the full time whistle. That is 2-1. We're going to still do a little bit more business before we get to the next game. But uh, we'll settle with that for now. It's a good win. That's six points on the board from the two games. I'm happy with it. Right. So, Grimaldo, the offer has actually been accepted. And he only wants 15k a week that is very very acceptable i'm gonna say he's a squad rotation player because i'm sure if that's what he is at benfica he should be happy with that here 15k pay rise that for me hopefully should be a done deal i think that's a great sign he's only 77 rated as you saw there but he's very young very quick he's got a lot about him right i'm gonna finish off this massive like talky episode with one final set of different things and again i want you guys if you listen to this point to put in the comments down below like opinions on each one you can do a massive massive comment but just let me know what you think on each one so jao cancelo should i buy him if we sell to butchie let me know i think he's a very good player he's very quick obviously he's portuguese i think he'd be a good like alongside bella in a bit of rotation throughout the season we've spoken about left backs thomas lamar i was looking at a lot of quick players this guy is quick pretty skilly a good little player. I don't think... Oh, it's got, he's got three-star skill mode. So not too bad, but he's a very good attacking player. Saul, a lot of people mentioned him. I think he could be a good choice in centre mid. Maybe could be a good player to pick up. A little bit on the slower side, but maybe could be a deputy to like uh, Granite Xhaka. Leon Bailey, this guy is just ridiculously quick. He's also got four-star skill moves. Another young player who could be really interested. Okay, I just realised the next one down was actually the wrong Pereira. I didn't want the United one. Wait, this one. This is the uh, the Pereira I'm looking at. Possibly picking up again. Five-star skills this guy's got. He's only got 11 months left in his contract. He's a quick, young attacking mid. Let me know if you think I should maybe get him to, like, deputise Ozil for, like, when Kozola moves on. Uh, Kovalenko is in the same book. Which one of those do you think I should go for? I, I'm thinking more towards him because the five-star skills. Obviously, Charlie Vasunda for next season. Another five-star skiller is Stefan El Shawari. Should I get him as a backup to Sanchez? Because going forward, I was looking. Really, on the left-hand side, now that we've got rid of Walcott, I mean, we have Sanchez, but then you also have, like, um, Awobi can play there and Chamberlain can play on the left. But really, I feel like we need a little bit more, like, talent on the left if something happens to Sanchez. So, maybe Stefan El Shawari. But other than that, boys, that brings us to the end of this episode. Let me know in the comments down below all the answers to the questions I've asked today because we have asked a lot. So let me know what you think down below. Subscribe to this channel if you're new around here. Smash that like button if you enjoyed it. Don't forget as well, if you want to see future episodes, there will be a link down below to the second channel as well. Have a fantastic day, guys, and I will see you all next time. Bye. What, what was that about?